Father, we thank you. Just honor the Lord with your voice and celebrate the Lord. Lift up your holy hands and just worship God tonight. Father, we are grateful to you. This is day two of our marriage seminar, Lord. We are grateful and we know that you are expected to the Lord, we visit you tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As many as we connect, Lord, touch them wherever they are. Put it into your remembrance, Lord. Touch their hearts, Lord. Even as we connect, Lord, we listen to you. We hear your word. If your word will run with you, Lord, we believe you. Believe your word, Lord, and believe your prophet. And even tonight, Lord, as you speak to us, Lord, we are ready to hear. Father, we are ready to hear. We are here to be an expectation. which started yesterday. Praise the Lord. And I believe that as you are here, go will visit your marriages and cause your marriage to thrive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. We will begin to read from 8, verse 8 and 9. Job 5, 8 and 9. Say, I would seek unto God. And unto God will I commit my cause. I will seek God, and unto him will I commit my cause. Now it says, which dwelleth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number. I will seek unto God, and unto the God would I commit my cause. Which dwelleth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without numbers. Marvelous things without number. Marvelous things without number. Psalm chapter 11, Psalm 11, Psalm 11. We shall be praying in a moment, praise be to God. Psalm 11, hallelujah, Psalm 11. The book of Psalms chapter 11, verse 3. Somebody will read for us, Psalm 11. Psalm 11 was prayed. Yes, sir. Sorry for King James. Yes, sir. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what will be the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? And where we wrote, uh, read just now in Job chapter 5, you see, I will submit my course unto God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. John chapter 5, see, I will seek unto God, and unto God will I commit my cause. Now I say, we do great things, unsearchable, marvelous, wondrous things. I don't know, but I believe I'm speaking to the people who God is doing wondrous things in their life. Marvelous things in their life. Amen. Praise be to God. And so tonight, we're going to be thanking the Lord as we seek Him tonight. Praise be to God. As we seek Him tonight. As we submit ourselves to him tonight, as we surrender to him tonight, because we know that he doeth great things, unsightable, one trust things God is doing in the midst of us. Can we begin to just thank the Lord for the great things that he's doing, the mighty things, the great things he's doing in the midst of us, the mighty things, the wondrous things, the testimonies that he's giving on to us on a daily basis in our lives, in our career, in our marriages. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you. Can you just begin to pray and just thank the Lord tonight? Father, we are grateful to you. We are here tonight to say thank you. We submit our cause to you. But the most part of it, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. And tonight, Lord, we are here to say, Father, let your will be done in our life. And so we thank you for all the great things that you've been doing since the beginning of the year to this moment. In the month of August, Lord, you've been doing wondrous things, testimonies of our testimonies, healings, 
things. Great and mighty things you're doing in the midst of your people. And Lord, tonight we say thank you. We appreciate you. Father, we are grateful to you. We will forever remain grateful to you every moment of our life and every other day. Lord, we thank you. You do great things. We see it. We experience it. We see what you're doing. We see what you're doing. Help us, oh God. And even tonight, Lord, as we listen to you tonight, you say, oh God, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Lord, the righteous cannot do anything without you. And that is why we are here tonight to say, Lord, we submit to you. We seek you and we submit. We surrender to you. Do that which no man can do in our lives and in our midst tonight. And even the remaining part of the program tonight, speak to your people. Speak to your people. Your word that we come. It will come down heavily, mightily, to the point of stronghold. Marriages shall be restored, oh God. Families shall be restored one to another. Changes with the, the desire changes that we want to see in our marriages, oh God. Yesterday, you asked us to put our house together. Lord, we, we put our house in order as we listen to your word, we run with it, and changes that we desire according to your plan will happen to us continually on the daily basis. Father, we are grateful to you. We celebrate you for in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Please welcome the Father. Working in abundance, moving in the spirit of the Holy Ghost, I am faithful. Are you working in abundance, working in abundance? Thank you for joining us today. Kindly note that due to COVID-19 restrictions and protocols, you are strongly advised to always ensure to put on your nose mask and maintain social distancing of at least 1.5 meters to 2 meters. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water and use hand sanitizers always. Once again, thank you for joining us. This is Kingdom Commission Ministry International, also known as KCMI Doha, Qatar, a place of rescue and transformation. Our main church service, Friday 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. at Canaby Hall. Our rescue hour, every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at all KCMI social media platforms. Our Tuesday prayer meeting starts 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on KCMI Zoom Network. For church transportation needs, kindly contact Brother Joshua on 3055-4218. I repeat, 3055-4218. Four two one eight. For Bible study at Abu Amor area, please contact Deacon Boniface on six six nine seven three zero five two. I repeat six six nine seven three zero five two. You can drop your prayer request in the prayer box at the back before you leave. Feel free to join our various ministries: choir, kids, youth, and singles, women's, men's, ushers and ushers, dance, and technical department. Come all to KCMI Literature Together.
your priest as a wife, as a husband, as a bachelor, as a sister, so God. In our lives, so God, single mothers and single fathers. Lord, whatever is not pleasing, oh God, men and women that are lonely, if it's not pleasing, take it away. We cry out this moment, oh God, whatever is not pleasing in our relationship with Jesus, I am a seminar. By the grace of God, the Lord spoke to us yesterday that we should put our house what, in order. We went for to say put your affairs in order and put your set your marriage in order. Arrange your life in order. The Lord spoke to Hezekiah, one of the kings of Israel, that he should put his house what, in order. The essence of marriage in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 is that we should enjoy life with a wife whom we love all the days of our fame of life that the Lord has given unto you under this song. My desire for every one of us that at the end of this seminar there will be realignment and be reordering and restructuring of our homes and our marriages in the name of Jesus. Amen. My desire at the end of this day, it will not be a deadlock, but it will be a wedlock. Amen. I might communicate to somebody. Because we have seen marriages that have wedded, they have wedded, but they ended up what? In deadlock. Nothing is moving. As a matter of fact, everybody's on his own, but that's not our desire. Amen. Our desire and to preach and declare that everyone shall enjoy his marriage in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew chapter 19, from verse 5 to 6, we all know from the scripture how God gave us a reason for marriage. So specific to this. And if anybody have it, have us read it. Let's see that reason. Let's see the reason. There's one Bible that scripture when we are talking about the marriage, marriage. The reason for marriage. The reason for marriage. Matthew chapter 9, 19. You can help me read it from verse Five to six. Five to six. If you can go from four, it will be wonderful. Well, from four, it will be wonderful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. And he answered and said, Yes, and he answered and said, Have you not read? Have you not read that he, that he, which made them at the beginning. So it is important, like Pastor is speaking to us right now, ready to work. Have you not read? The question is that as many who wants to marry, as many who wants to marry, they ask the question, what is the knowledge that you have acquired? What is the knowledge that you have acquired? How many books have you read? 
Have you actually gone through books about marriage? You are planning to marry. There are so many books, so many books related to marriage. Even if you are inside the marriage, you are still reading. As a matter of fact, I still keep reading. Amen. I still keep what? Reading. Many times I read. Some of these books written about marriages, I still read them. Even before this seminar, there are books I'm reading. Have you read? Young men, they want to go into marriage, but have they read? No. What is your understanding? What's your understanding about marriage before you enter? Go ahead. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? He that made them at the beginning, male and female. Praise God. Hallelujah. Male and female. Go ahead. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother. For this reason, is this this one? For this what? Reason. He made them male and female. For this reason. So there is a reason why God made you male and female. Am I communicating to somebody? What is that reason? The Bible says it. For this cause. For this reason, yes. Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife? A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. There is a living and a cleaving. What I said? Living and cleaving. What I said? Living and cleaving. I will help you understand what I'm saying. If you see the scripture, there's a reason. The reason is here is clear. Living and cleaving. So you must leave. If you want to cleave, you must what? Leave. leave. If you are not ready to leave, there is no reason for cleaving. There is no reason for joining. Just stay where you are. Please, so that people will not laugh at you. If you are not ready to leave the safe, if you are not ready, to live the lifestyle that you are living as a single, single bachelor, single girl, single sisters. If you are not ready, there is no need to ask pastor to pray for you. Am I communicating to somebody? You must make up your mind. Hallelujah. You must what? Make up your mind. That's what we say in depth. What preparation and planning. Most people, when they have discovered, they are not ready to leave. That's the issue. That's the issue. Maybe they're a breadwinner. I've seen single girls, breadwinner. Am I communicating to somebody? Most times they don't want to leave. I'm taking care of my family. They want to leave. And so even if you come at that time, I'm telling you because they're not ready to leave, their home may not last. Amen. So we must bring to what? To leave and clean it. What I say? Leave and clean. Go ahead, sir. And the twin shall be one flesh. And you see this? Until there is a cleaving, there will be no one flesh. First of all, you must leave and join, right? You must leave and clean. It is in the cleaving that you become what? One flesh. So what if you leave? Amen? I don't clean. There's no one flesh. This is the issue. Until you come to a point in your life, which I told you about the four stages of marriage, the foundational stage, the understanding stage, the adjustment stage, so the adjustment stage, and then the clearing stage. The four stages, first, the foundational stage, the second will be the adjustment stage, the third one is the understanding stage, and the last one is the clearing stage. Until you understand the cleaving, you cannot be one flesh. Shout a louder, amen. amen. Jesus has made it very clear. Let's finish it, sir. Wherefore, there are no more twin. There are no more twin. People are saying no marriages. People are saying marriages, they are still twin. Amen. Amen. They are still two. Am I communicating? They are living as two. They are never living as what? As one. Go ahead. But one flesh. But one flesh. What therefore God has joined together? Therefore, yeah, whatever God has joined together, let no man put us on. Let no man put what asunder. I tell you, brethren, if you see this one, <laughs> if you take this scripture so clear, for this reason shall a man leave his father eh, and his mother. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? And join with his wife. 
The question is, you must live, you must live, you become one flesh. And the Bible says, whatever God has joined together, let no man put what asunder. Now the question I have to ask you, the relationship you are in now, is it God? Are you sure it's God that joined you? Are you sure? What God has joined together? So step one, we understand that marriage is failed because God is not involved. And I had a message last Friday, before this Friday, when I was in Nigeria, that God must be involved, amen, in your marriage. That God must be involved what? in your marriage. And I, my desire is that God will be involved in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let God be involved in your marriage. That's what God has joined together. Let no man put us on that. And so yesterday we went and talked about how to put your house in order. And one of the things is in depth what? Preparation and planning. Amen? Amen? And number two, we must say it must cost you. There must be what? A sacrifice. Am I correct? Yeah. And number three, we talk about what? Self what? Control. You must have what? Self-control. There are people that do not have, have made their homes a place not to be because there's no what? Self-control. We must have that self-control in our homes, in our marriages, because challenges are out there. Things are there. We'll all understand, but we must have what? Self-control. And then we ask that we must be committed and we must be faithful. And we say survey was conducted and they said 73% of faith of marriage is lack of commitment and faithfulness. I pray that yours will not fail in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Utilize the tool of wisdom. You need wisdom and you need knowledge in your home. That's more important, wisdom. Via wisdom, you maintain trust for one another. Am I communicating? You maintain what? Trust. Via wisdom, you have knowledge. You maintain wisdom. You have wisdom, you have knowledge, you have understanding. In the place of understanding, there is communication. What I say there is what? Communication. communication. How do we talk about? Because you can't have understanding without what? Communication. It is in the process of communication you understand one and another. So marriage is important that we must communicate to one another. Communicate. Can I hear the word communicate? No matter what it is, whether good or bad, what I say, communicate. Whether little or big, what you do? Communicate. You are out for a project, communicate. Am I communicating? You intend to do something, communicate. You want to travel, communicate. Somebody heard what I'm talking about. It is wrong if you do not communicate that your wife will hear of what you are doing at your back. Am I speaking to somebody? It may not be bad, but it might be good something. But try to make sure you communicate effectively. Am I communicating to somebody? Hallelujah. So from this moment, you want to be the home to be to be stable. You have your home to be what God wants you to be, learn to communicate. Communication is so what? It's vital. Communication is what? Vital. In anything you are doing, just to me. There's no hiding place. Shout out loud, amen. Mm -hmm. You can't become one flesh and you are still hiding it. It can't work. Am I communicating to somebody? So communication is what? Ready. Learn to confide on one and another. In the place of wisdom, in the place of knowledge and understanding, confide on one another. Number six, you say build earthly and internal what? Family what? Legacy. Don't stay thinking just about marriage. There's a legacy you are building. I always say it is very important. When Joshua came to a point in his life, he said, me and my family. You understand me? But as for me and my house, we shall what? Serve the Lord. Legacy. Somebody understand what I'm talking about? We're meant to understand the book of Acts of Apostles. That a man who's a prisoner, God converted and the whole household. So learn to understand what we are talking about. Building what? Earthly and internal what? Family what? Legacy. Hallelujah. And today, by the grace of God in continuation of our studies, I would want to add one of few things <clears throat> in terms of putting our lives in order. I will be so specific today to our single men, single young boys and girls. I will be specific. Yesterday was more of a mix. Yesterday was more of what? Of a mix. We had a mix yesterday. And we're able to let ourselves understand that 
God will deliver us from many and big girls in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody understand what I'm talking about? The mentality of a big girl, a big girl mentality. Am I communicating to somebody? Mocking the world, baboon the job. Shout the louder in. That's what we say in Nigeria. Mocking the world, baboon what? The job. A big girl mentality. Let's avoid it in the name of Jesus. Amen. For single men and women, I understand there are challenges that you are facing in trying to make the right choice. <laughs> But I want to assure you tonight that God wants to involve God. Situations must change in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, one of the scriptures that we all know. I knew the scriptures for long as a young man. He said, No one shall lack what I meant. So definitely, if you are ready for marriage, God will definitely bring on to you the right wealth and right woman. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Because I know for sure. In Proverbs 19, verse 14, <clears throat> it says, House and riches are the inheritance from the fathers, but a wise and understanding wealth comes from whom? From the Lord. So, what God has joined together, let no man put what? A son. So, a prudent wife comes from who? Comes from who? Comes from God. So, it means you are dependable on God. And so, for you to Let's get to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. We can read that. <clears throat> and so mine today, like I said, is just to encourage as many who are there, you are a single mother, you are just trusting God to have a home. Maybe you have divorced, you are trusting God to remarry again. And maybe you have never been married, and you're just a young man trusting God for marriage. I have, a, I have an advice for you tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Can somebody help me as we read that together? 26. Yes, sir. And I find more bitter than death. I find more bitter than death. Did you see this one? This is a man, Solomon, full of what? Wisdom. Speaking. Please, when you are reading Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, understand that there are in depth wisdoms that are coming. Am I going to make it? Yeah. So I say, I find something bitter. What is that bitter? Than death. Can you imagine? Bitter than death. So there are, you can't, there are things that are still bitter than death. Go ahead. And I find more bitter than death the woman. A woman, yes. Whose heart is snares. Whose heart is snares. Gentlemen, my prayer is that you not find a man, a woman whose heart is snail. Amen. Come on, your amen is not like a dash. Amen. May you not find so woman, a woman or a man whose heart is full of trap. Amen. Amen. You are entering because he wants to trap you. Worse than death. Men are ready to trap you. Women are ready to work to trap you. They will coin you into marrying them. They have an agenda. You will not understand young men. You will not understand young girls. They have a reason, but they will never tell you. Let me tell you, until you enter, you will understand that the reason is to trap you. It's to ensnare your life. You can't do anything anymore. I have seen young men vibrant in the Lord, God's calling, and God, and as a matter of fact, because they did not properly seek the face of God, they enter a trap. I know a young man whose ministry ended up like that because he married a wrong woman. The day he wants to minister, the woman will show that it's a girl. <laughs> before he comes to the pulpit, he will show that it's a problem. He's not ready to go to church. He said, that's not what I married you for. This young man could not go forward. Today, I just pity his life. He has packaged himself and gone to the village without fulfilling customs. May not be your portion in the name of Jesus. And speaking of experience on what things I have seen. Go ahead, sir. Whose heart is snares? Whose heart is snared? If you have another person, I'll be so grateful. Let your young men understand today, and the young girls understand. If you have another version, I'll be grateful. I'll be grateful. Quickly, I'll go through that, and I'll try to, yes. NIV. Yes. And I found more bitter. I found more bitter than death, yes. I found more bitter than death. Yeah. The woman who is dead. Yes. It's the same. Who's Who's heart is a trap. 
Whose heart is what a trap? God bless you. And whose hand are chained? My God, whose heart is what a trap? And the hands are what chained. Some of you, you don't know the girl you are seeing. He said, oh, this is a beautiful girl. She's a fine lady. She's going to be good for me. Nice uh, outing. We can go on here and there. Hey, you don't know that you're married to change. His hands are changed. Changed. Maybe we change your life. I know a young man. This is not a young lady. I've been part of it. She was one of the leaders. In our youth program, those years, we committed so many to our hands. We saw something in her, I saw something in her. A young man just walked in there because she walked in a very nice place. I don't know why she's, we did not wait to see the face of God. And the young man approached her, she agreed. By the time she got married to today, all that she is dies. She cannot even operate. She cannot even call anybody. She's living in fear. Some men hands are also in chain. It's both ways. Go ahead. Go ahead. The man who pleases God will escape her. Ah! Hey, if you don't please God, Miss what will not escape her, right? So any man who pleases who? God. Help me out. Anyone who pleases God will escape, escape her. her. So if you do not please God, you will not escape them. Oh, there are many. Oh. Have you finished? No. Thank you. Yes, if you're a sinner, she will, uh, she will yes, a sinner if you are there messing up, go ahead, no. Is no? Messing up in the church. You come to church, your heart is not right before God. Don't worry, you will soon get a lady whose heart is full of smell and whose hands are full of chain. By the time she changes you, you can't come out. Hallelujah. I must speak it to somebody. That's not your portion in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I said, that's not your portion in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The essence of this meeting is not to make you to be afraid, but it's to warn you. Hello? It's to what? Warn you and advise you. If you please God, the Bible says what will happen. You will escape her. There are so many girls out there. I am telling you, gentlemen. That's what they are doing. Many men out there, that's what they are doing. But then, let them be called Mr. and Mrs. That's enough. Shout a louder, amen. amen. But you know, as a man, as a woman, you have a vision, you have a call, you have a purpose. Brother, look for someone who can accomplish your purpose in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Those who fear God, they escape them. And I pray that you will escape in the name of Jesus. Yeah. My advice number one, Conquer your fears. What did I say? Conquer your fears. Are you afraid? Conquer it today. That's all I can tell you. Because some of us are confused. What should I do next? There is a word called gamaphobia. G A M O. P H O B I A. You know phobia already, but there's a word called gamma, gamma phobia. What does it mean? It's a fear of commitment of marriage. It's a fear of commitment what? to marriage. It is well beyond pre wedding jitters. It's an intense, intense fear that can cause you to lose your value in relationship. Gamma phobia. It's true. It's true. This is a fear of commitment to marriage. Many young men today and men are afraid. And these are some of the questions they are afraid of. Some of them are fear, afraid that they might not have children. Am I communicating? Amen. Let's, let's look at some of those fears. Fear number one is that I might not have children. But my prayer for you today, you will conquer it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you one of those sisters and brothers who are afraid that you don't have a child? Because of the fact that they have seen some families and they have no kids, and then there are pressures from left and right. And because of that, you are asking yourself, 
and you're afraid of going into it, maybe because of it. But let me assure you, even in the stage of Sarah, God still gave him Isaac. Am I communicating to somebody? Sarah was married, but he, at the end, God gave him what? Give her what? Isaac. Rebecca was the same, but I think you understand that God opened what? Her womb. Rachel was the same, but God what? Opened her womb. So don't be afraid. God will open that womb in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. The scripture went for, I said, I shall not be buried what? In the land. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14. He said, no, shall be buried in the land. So are you afraid of that? Even if you are married today, and yet you are not yet pregnant, you are not yet fruitful, don't give up. What I said, don't what? Don't give up. So years back, I have a brother, a family. He was the chairman of our wedding. Hallelujah. Somebody heard what I'm talking about. Wonderful brother. During our wedding, he was a chairman. He was a doctor. Somebody we looked onto in our days. But something went wrong. Shout a louder amen. Somehow, he married to his sister. The marriage was on. We are part of those who go around and try to make sure we visit them and all that. But every moment, there has been a problem. Problem from here, problem from there. The child, am I communicating to somebody? They keep going, thinking the cry will come, and families will come, precious on their left and right. Unfortunately, nobody was special enough, shout a louder, amen. And things did not go the right way. Stay on and be patient. Trust God. The Lord will surely visit you. Yeah. Somebody heard what I'm talking about. Yeah. Don't be afraid. At that stage, you, you need just the support of the man or the woman. Am I communicating? And trust the word of God. I am sure you shall be fruitful and to the end you will be a child in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, number two, there's this fear that what if I marry a wrong person? Amen. What if I what? Marry what? A wrong person. A wrong partner. I will continue to regret all my life. Especially today, we have illusions in everywhere. The illusion is we are seeing a lot of people that have advertised their marriage in the Instagram and Facebook. Hello. Uh -huh. Am I communicating? Nice photo shoot. Somebody heard what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice what? Photoshoot. There's this illusion in our lives. And we look at those moments. Ah, nice marriage, wonderful marriage. Is somebody heard what I'm talking about? Is somebody heard what I'm saying? And we hear a lot of stories and, and how to, they do their pre wedding, is how they do their honeymoon. Am I speaking to somebody in the house? Hallelujah. Amen. And so we, we that are there watching them and seeing how the marriage goes, we begin to ask ourselves, What do you God? Are you sure this decision I'm making is the right one? Could be the right man? Could it be the right girl? Could it be this brother? Hey, hallelujah. The Bible says, say, Sit down and count the cost. Sit down. Stop this fear of missing out. They call it FOMA. F-O-M-O. -O, fear of missing out. You see a young man getting married. The other idea is getting married. You say, oh, I don't want to let my own come. And please, if anybody comes now, ah, <laughs> hallelujah, am I communicating? I will grab you. <laughs> it's not so. Shout a loud amen. I want to assure you, God will grant you your own in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear loud that? Amen? Amen. Amen. You will not miss out in the name of Jesus. 
for my community. I speak to that brother. I say you will not miss out. Amen. I speak to that sister. You will not miss out. Amen. The Bible says, he that finds a wife, Proverbs 18 verse 22, what he says, help me out. Who that finds a wife, finds what? A good thing. And obtain it what? A favor from the Lord. So do you trust the word of God or do you trust yourself for fear of missing out? Trust the word of God. If God gave it to our forefathers, he will give it to you. If God gave it to us, he will give it to you. You will not miss out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And because of that, many girls are not stable anymore. Many young men are not stable anymore. Number three, the fear of losing personal identity. Number one is fear that I might not have kids. I may not have a children. I'm not a complete woman. This is most of the agony people are facing. Number two, the fear is that uh, I may marry the wrong person and regret all my life. The fear of losing personal what? Identity and independence. Yes, I agree. Before you marry, you are independent of yours, right? You are doing things your own, right? Am I communicating? You don't ask questions when you want to do any projects. You don't ask questions when you want to go out. You hang around with your friends. Hello, is somebody heard what I'm talking about? You hang around with what? With your friends. You take decisions of your own. So you are in charge of your finance. You are in charge of your job. Is somebody hearing me? But that this aspect that you said, the fear of identity, of losing my identity as a young girl, as a young man, this time as somebody, I had to control me. Am I communicating? If the fear is that maybe I might lose my job, the fear is that when I'm pregnant, how am I going to look like? The fear is that uh, how am I going to take care of my family because I'm losing my identity? At least I'm the one taking care of the family. I'm taking care of my father. I'm taking care of my mother. Now if I get married, I don't know where the husband is able to, to help me out or succeed or you don't need to support my family. There is this fear of us losing what of our identity. If you ask me, that has been their situation. And that fear is always there. And I ask myself sometimes, truly, as a young man, I never had that kind of fear. Shout a louder, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. This was not one. No, that was not part of it. Am I communicating to somebody? Because I know for sure, if it's God that is joining us, there's nothing that God will not supply. Can I hear out that? Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. What did he say? What did he say? Just to answer your question, for those who are afraid, can I answer your question of losing your identity? Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Quickly, help me. In James. Yes, in Four James. Nine. Two are better than one. Two are better than one. So don't be afraid of losing your what? Your identity. I want to assure you that two are better than one. Come on, two are better, better than, than one. one. So this is the word of God. It's not my word. The rest are sure. When God is there and God is the one leading you, definitely your marriage shall be better. Husband and wife, the Bible says two are better than one. Two are better than one. I'm happy to tell you we are better than when I was single. I am better than when I was single. Am I communicating to somebody? Go ahead. Because they have a good reward from their labor. Yeah, yeah, they have what? A good reward from their labor. So my single sisters who are afraid of losing your identity and your job and your finance, don't be afraid. The Bible says when two of you come together, there is a reward of your labor. Amen. So it means God is saying you'll be even more blessed than when you were single. Is somebody hear what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. You know, I come from a society where we have this those days, not now. So, 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 so group in, in my country, and uh, I don't want to mention the tribe, but they have changed now. The mentality has changed. In those days, they, they find it difficult to marry, and all they want to do is that they must build a house, they must have a car, they must have everything ready before they think of marriage. Am I communicating with them? Things have changed anyway. Shout a loud that amen. They want to make sure that they have everything ready before marriage will enter. Brother, that is not the truth. Shout a loud that amen. amen. Even in the Bible says, for you have what reward of your labor? Reward of your labor. Go ahead. For if they fall. For if they fall. The one will lift up his fellow. Ah, what a joy. Two are better. Than one. Help me, two are better, 
Now, one, if you are going to manage to understand this, that in case anyone falls, there's somebody standing by your side. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead. The word to him. Word to him. That is alone. Oh, I don't want to say this. But that's what the Bible says. Word to him that is alone. <laughs> when he falls. When you fall. For he has not. He has nobody around him. to help him out. To help him out. 11. Ah, he said, oh, hey. please go home and read it. Shout it louder. Amen. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. They don't read it at all. Read it and complete it just because of what few things we have. So we need to go through. So I have a solution for you. For those who are afraid of losing your personal identity, God will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There are others, they are honest. What if I don't love him? Or if I don't get attracted to him anymore? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. What if I don't love him? What if I don't get attracted? Look at this fear going around. Hallelujah. Maybe I may not be the same. I may lose my this. I may lose my that. My shape. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe at the end, he doesn't love me anymore. That's not the truth. Gentlemen, when we enter into marriage, we are single. But in the process, marriage, children will come. Am I communicating to somebody? Children will come. The wife, the husband will never be the same. And the stages are changing. situations are changing. You get older, you get older. But that should not diminish your love for one another. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. I pray today you will conquer your fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The fear is that no, the man may not satisfy my sexual desire. Yes, my drive. Maybe he cannot be the person. Maybe he cannot meet up in my biological needs. Don't be afraid. Is somebody hear what I'm talking about? Don't. Can somebody help me with the book of First John chapter four verse eight? Quickly, Songs of Solomon verse eight to seven. I want have solutions for somebody tonight. Songs of Solomon chapter eight verse seven. If you have it, fine and good. Help me out. Let's rest, let's read that one. Quickly, and uh, I just want to analyze some of the fears we are having around. And my job for you is to conquer your fears tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes. <clears throat> Many waters cannot quench love. Many waters cannot quench what? Love. It means that in the process of the marriage, there will be so many waters, so many challenges. Hello. Somebody hear what I'm talking about. So many what? Waters. Is that, is that correct? Yes. So many waters cannot what? Quench love. Quench love. Yes. Neither can flood drown it. My God, neither flood what? Drown it. Are you facing flood in your marriage? Please do not allow the flood to overtake you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Neither flood can drown your love for what? Love who she is, love her for where you first met her, when you were in caution, love her for that. Even at that stage that you have become one, love one another. At this stage, somebody says that there's a caution phase, there's a conceptual stage. Am I communicating? That, that, that is the wedding phase, there's the actual marriage phase, and there's a retirement phase. <laughs> Amen. Nothing, whatever phase you are in, it should not stop you from loving one another. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. Grow all together. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Some people, they come to a stage in their life, they say, no, 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 the man is old for me, and then they look for a young man. Or they say the woman is old for me, they look for what? A young lady. Am I communicating? No, brother, it shouldn't be so. The Bible says, Lord, many waters cannot quench what? Love. Neither the flesh shall what? Drown it. I pray that you shall overcome this fear in the name of Jesus. Uh, the other aspect, can he or she take care of me? Does he have enough money? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's that stage. Does he have enough money? Can he take care of me? I don't see him taking care of me. And all those questions are out there. Uh, you can get all in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I mean, chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Praise the Lord, somebody. When God is involved, like we said in Matthew chapter 19 from verse 4 to 6, when God is involved, provision shall be made in Jesus' name. Amen. So number one, I told you, conquer what? Your fears. And I, I try to apply the fears, about six fears, I told you. I pray that your marriage will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. The other aspect before we go is confront those altars in your life. Conquer your fears 
and confront your altars. What did I say? Confront what? Your altars. There are too many things that are hindering you besides those fears. There are some altars. You know it very well. Family altars, generational altars, personal altars of ours because of our ignorance, consciously ourselves. We acquire those things. Because of our lifestyles, we have altars that are standing against our lives. We need to fix it. We need to conquer those altars that will make our marriage fail. Because the reason is that the Romans said the seven verse 19. Says, for what I do is not the good I want to do, nor the evil that I do not want to do. But what happened? There's a reason that is troubling my life. Things I ought to fix have not fixed. They have kept me bound. So, gentlemen, if you know at this stage of your life, but at this stage, you know you're not married yet. Get drunk and get drunk. A girl is drunk. The man is drunk. Young boys and girls getting drunk. These are altars. What, what do you think that when you get two of you get married, everybody will not be a drunkard? Am I communicating to somebody? Everybody, the house is full of darkness. And honestly, uh, I'll tell you the truth. I've seen where a father get drunk. The son gets drunk. Am I communicating to somebody? <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, the wife is drunk. <laughs> so who kisses? <laughs> who takes it out of the house anymore? It's a hard task. Confront the face. You know it. That even when you saw the man, the man knew he's a drunkard. And you want to go into it? God help you. Shout out loud, amen. I said, shout out loud, amen. amen. You know the man's hands are not clean, or the woman is not clean. Things you know him, man, they are not correct. Confront those altars first. Don't say, no, by the time we marry, it will stop. Who will tell you to stop? Are you God? Am I communicating to somebody? Confront them. Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Help me as read out. The altars of grief, the altars of lust, the altars of covetousness confront them. Romans 8, 20. Yes. For the creature was made subject to vanity. The creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly. Not willingly. But by reason of him who but, has subjected the same in hope. Amen. By the reason of who has subjected it to what? In hope. Yes, go ahead. 21. Yeah. No. Go ahead. 21. Yeah. Because the creature himself also shall be de delivered from the bondage of corruption. The creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. corruption. Brother, you have to be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. You know that the things, the, the source of the work of the man to be, your husband, you know he's corrupt. Hallelujah. Amen. You are enjoying it because it's buying you clothes, it's taking you out. Blah, 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 blah. Don't worry. One day, yes, it's your uh, region. Shout out like it. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You have to be delivered so that we enjoy the glorious what? Liberty. Yes. That's what I'm trying to bring in. You enjoy what? A glorious what? Liberty. You know the source of the mass wealth is not genuine. Yet you want to walk into it. Say that. God bless you. Enough. The source of his life is not genuine. You know the guy lies a lot. He lies. He's full of lies. He tells you good money. Understand there's something wrong. Shout out loud. Amen. Is somebody hear what I'm talking about? Confront those things. Don't wait and say, no, don't worry. During marriage, I will cancel him. Eh. Okay, God bless you. Hallelujah. Am I communicating to somebody? Confront it. You are seeing some things and symptoms of anger and all that in the man's life. You are still there. No, confront it. Somebody heard what I'm talking about. 
May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see worldliness everywhere. The way he does, the way he does everything. Worldliness is inside. Hallelujah. Know the history of your family and confront those altars. You know that there are families where the, the mother is divorced, the other kids, and the, the daughters, the senior ones are divorced, they are staying alone. You know, nobody stays in the husband's home. Am I communicating to somebody? Brother, break it through so that it does not speak for your family to worry in the name of Jesus. Number three, well, I have a few minutes to go. You can read, there are some scriptural backing. You can read Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. Hosea chapter 4, verse chapter 5, verse 4. You can read it on your own. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Just as a backup when you have time. If you do not destroy it now and confront it, those things will confront your future. Number three, say no to desperation. Say no to what? Desperation. Because some of us are too desperate. And that has been the beginning of many boys and young men's fall. So desperate for it. Anyone that comes, I'm okay. Mm. Okay, you'll get anyone. Praise the Lord. You'll get what? Anyone. And please, I beg you, families, let's stop putting pressures on our children. Give them their time. Let them pray and seek the face of God. Take their time and do it. Unnecessary pressure has led them to suffer so shipwreck. The mothers want to marry, the mothers want to have their choice. The fathers want to have their choice. They shout aloud that amen. amen. You want to go to my village and marry. Especially some of us now in, in some of our tribes in Nigeria. They want to make sure you go to their village and marry. Hallelujah. You do not see any other good person in the face of this head or this from their village. Ah, they're going to help you. <laughs> shout aloud that amen. amen. Am I speaking to somebody? If the person is not from your village, it's not right for you. No, you might be listening to somebody else. You may not be making the right choice. We must say no to what? Desperation. Don't be desperate for it. Not because your friends are getting married and getting wedded. You want to be desperate for it. In Isaiah chapter 4, 40, you know it, verse 31. It says about what? For they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew what? Their strength. So the reason is that you need to wait upon the Lord no matter the situation. Wait upon him. I am sure he will give you the right one in Jesus' name. Because in the process of desperation, we become hopeless. Pain and agony, torture and torment. We can't even have the right prayer partner anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I communicating to somebody? That's the truth. We are so confused with desperation. I can't understand. Why a believer, child of God, daughter of the Most High God, get confused and see an unbeliever that comes and he opens the door for them? That's desperation, right? Or not? That's it. No! It shouldn't be so. That's what the Bible says in this process. Only married to what? In the Lord. What is it? Married to what? In the Lord. Don't be desperate for it. That will push you into suicide. Be careful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because you may make a wrong choice and that man you marry but before you know what happened. He will strangle you in, in the night and they say he, he, he died while sleeping. Somebody strangled you. <laughs> Am I communicating to somebody? Because there is no CCTV in the house. Is somebody I would have talking about. It has happened to many people because of desperation. That shall not be your portion. Amen. I said, that shall not be your portion. Amen. I will end up this teaching tonight. 
But what I have spoken unto you as an advice to young men, the first thing I said, conquer what? Yes. What I say, conquer what? Yes. Your fears. Number three. Number two, what I say, confront what? Your altars. And number three, say no to what? The spirit. Trust God. He will give you your time. Amen. Trust God. He will give you your wife. Amen. I'm very confident your husband is coming. Amen. As I'm confident your wife is coming. Amen. Even that single mother, your husband is coming. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, your husband will come. Let me tell you the truth. That being a single mother, it is not a cause. Oh, it is not what? A cause. Don't allow people to push you into that background. We have seen many who did not give birth to their own, but they aborted them. <laughs> Am I communicating to someone? So trust God, you give the right person the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand up tonight and get to appreciate God. It's a round of this program to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Just today was specific to our young men and young sisters in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. That whatever fears you are passing through today, you will conquer it. Amen. I say you will conquer them. Amen. Grace to conquer your fears. Amen. I say grace to conquer your fears. In the name of Jesus, receive that. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace to conquer those fears in your life via the word of God. La God is interested in your case. God is interested in giving you a home. God said he given a solitary a family. He gives them a home. Yes, there is a home for someone. A prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from the Lord. The Bible says, her price is far above rubies. And yes, a virtuous woman, her price is far above rubies. God will grant you that heart desire in the name of Jesus. That woman, that sister, that young girl, I don't care about what the devil is telling you now. In the name of Jesus, you shall overcome your fears. You shall overcome your fear in the name of Jesus. But the reason of God's word, go God. Whatever is delayed, whatever has caused delay, I command the reverse in the name of Jesus. Every altar, family altar, sir, standing against you today, I break it in the name of Jesus. I say, I break that altar, confronting your future, confronting your home, confronting your marriage in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, oh God, because we know you are in control of our face, oh God. My desire for young ones, oh God, the Lord. They will walk into your divine access. We are in the law. They will make the right choices in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion and exist in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of worldliness and flesh that will control them as Lord I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. No powers of carnality lose your grips against your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray the Holy Ghost, you will direct it. Show the mercy and lead them in the right path in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you for